What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the craziest hall show on the internet, Retro Game Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, the Game Shark is here on Retro Game Hall. He is here to be part of the craziness. We've got some pickups for you guys. We've got some stereo pickups. We've got some carts. We've got some portables. We've got some disc space. We've got some current gen. We've even got some next gen, even though neither of us own a next gen yet. But that's okay, because we're getting ready to get our shit ready so that when we get our next gen console, like when we actually kill Bigfoot, who was riding on the unicorn, who was carrying the Xbox, and we get the console, it's like, dude, we actually got a game to play. Yeah. And it's a next gen. Mm -hmm. But is it really next gen if it's here? Wouldn't that be the new current gen? I don't think so. Because that would mean like PS4 and Xbox One are last gen. Yeah. Wow. But it's like, is this is the Xbox One X last gen? I mean, it would have to be that's right. Like a mid. That's like a that's a mid gen. <laughs> that's, a mid -gen. <laughs> that's a point. That's point five gens ago, <laughs> since it's in between Gen A and Gen B. So the PS4 Pro and the One X are like in the middle of the generation. This is getting too complicated. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, honestly, I'm gonna give Sony some credit here. They got it right by just calling it the PS5. Yeah. Like now we got to get the Xbox One Series X. Can we just call it the <laughs> Xbox Five? Like, like can't we just call it that? Because that's that's essentially what what. Or Xbox Four, I guess. Yeah, can can we just call it that, or just come up with a new name? Why does it have to be Xbox One again? I don't know. <laughs> this is this is too hard to figure out. But you know, we're we're not here to to get too far into the politics of that. We're here to talk about games. We've got some really good stuff. Um, we would have had some more good stuff, but um, the postal service isn't working like it should right now. Um, uh, like. One of my pickups came from Massachusetts and went all the way down to Georgia, and I don't know why, unless somebody who was drunk was doing it because they passed where I live in Virginia by about <laughs> 600 miles. All so people behind the wheel or something. They must have. Oh well, man, we fucking passed it back there. Yeah, you, you passed it like three states ago, bro. So I had some, I had some big ticket items, man. I had some, you know some stuff I've been waiting like 20 years to get that isn't cheap, some stuff that I've been after for a while that was supposed to be here today, but it's not. So I guess that's that. So yeah, we're kind of stuck with what we got here, but I think we got a decent enough haul to give you guys a little, of a, little bit of entertainment. This isn't going to be the normal length of a haul video where you get like a good solid hour because we only put these out like four times a year. This one's going to be kind of a mini episode. So probably about half that time, but dude, it's okay. The game shark's here. Mm -hmm. It's all good, man. Like we were downstairs earlier. He was working on my sickly Sega CD one. Uh, if you follow the Retro Game Lounge on Facebook page, you can see the picture I put up there of Mark hard at work um, getting my CD one. The CD one's up and running, man. Everything's good. It's working fine. You know, we just get mine fixed. yeah. He's, <laughs> we're gonna go to Starland after this and get his fixed. Yeah. But uh, we gotta go to Roy Rogers first because yeah. Mark is a fiend for Roy Rogers. So. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to do, man, a lot of stuff to cover, but um, I think the only way to kick this off, Mark, is how we always do it, which is cartridges, because yeah. I like cartridges. Yeah, me too. You know why? Because they have no loading time. Yeah. You put them in and they play instantly. And they're more reliable. They are. They don't scratch mm -hmm. or anything like that. All you really got to do is keep them clean, and you know they'll pretty much last just almost indefinitely, mm -hmm. I would think, you know, keep all the rust and stuff off them. But yeah. uh, I guess... Uh, yeah, th this okay. this is right right now. This is where we cut so that you can get to the next segment, which is cartridges. Yeah. In case you didn't know that, <laughs> so it's coming any second now. Wait for it. Okay, so Mark's the guest here, and since he was like downstairs working really hard on my stuff, we're gonna let him go first. Okay. So what you got, buddy? You got Paperboy on the Sega Genesis. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Um, a couple of YouTubers I watched, they actually just recently picked this up, so it enticed me to pick it up. Which, uh, fun fact, this one is probably the best, the closest you're going to get to the arcade version. Because it has the um, one-liners, the kid says. Oh, he, he actually talks? Yeah. Oh, I didn't when even you, know that. Um, when you crash, you're like, oh, darn. <laughs> or uh, if you, like, hit, um, say if you hit a subscriber and he <clears throat> goes through windows, like, don't tell my boss. <laughs> I didn't, dude. Like I've never played the arcade like game. That's a super rare and expensive arcade game because you actually have the handlebars yeah. of the guy. Yeah, it's really it's a pricey arcade cabinet. So yeah, so this is a <laughs> solid copy. I was playing it for a little bit. Um, 
One thing I wanted to point out is, if you uh, have a Mega SG, this game will not play. Like, I, po I popped it in what? and I just got a black screen. Do they know about it? I Well, now they do. I told them about it. I, I filed a complaint. Well, not a complaint, but like a, a ticket. I was like, hey, this doesn't work. So they're reaching out to the developers mm -hmm. to fix it. Because they were like, do you have the latest version? I took a picture, mm -hmm. showed them I had the latest version. And they're like, all right, well, 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 we'll reach out to the developers. Yeah, they can just patch it to yeah. fix it. I mean, it's, it would take forever to test every single Genesis game. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, what is it, like close to a thousand? I mean, it's like... There's, like there's a lot, dude. It would just you gotta you gotta test your main stuff, you know, your Sonics, your Streets of Rage, things like that. Mm -hmm. You can't test everything, dude. That just, that would take too long. Yeah. So. So unfortunately, it doesn't work, but it worked in my Retron Five, and you're very obviously. You're right regular here. Genesis. Regular Genesis. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's a good solid pickup. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go next if that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. So I've got a pair of Ness pickups. Um, this one you're probably wondering, this is Athena, probably you're wondering why, like, Jimbo, why didn't you have that? It's not an expensive game, it's SNK. The short answer is I thought I did, because when you have this many games, it's hard to remember what you do and don't have. I do have an app where my library is tracked now, which I consult actually a lot, which has kept me from double buying games several times, and it's also encouraged me to buy games because I thought I had them, but I actually didn't. So. I wanted a play copy of Athena, which is a really cool uh, game from SNK. And we actually have an unusual NES game, Pugsley Scavenger Hunt. This is this is actually a pretty rare one. Yeah, I wonder if I have that one. It's not easy to come by. It's not. I mean, it's not like it's not like super unicorn rare or anything like that. But yeah. it's definitely not a common game. This this one takes a little bit of doing uh, to be able to find it. So I like the obscure games like that. I like the Adams Family. So. I, I just nice. had to get it because yeah, it's, it's got to be better than Fester's Quest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think even the original game is better. Yeah. I mean, to be perfectly honest, dude, I think Fester's Quest is a better app. It's not a terrible game. It's just ridiculously hard. Oh, yeah. The and spawning enemies. The spawning enemies, the fact awesome. that you get gun power downs, that you can't tell the difference between those and power ups, mm -hmm. that's dumb. Yeah. It shouldn't be a lottery whether or not you're going to get a power up or a power down. You should know. Because mm -hmm. then if you get a power down, it's your fault. Yeah. So, yeah, but other than that, I mean, it's it's a decent game, but um, never played this one. Looking forward to checking it out, man. Yeah, definitely. So, we're going portable yeah. for this segment. Um, I don't have any, well, not really. We'll get to that later, but um, Mark has some portable stuff. Old school portable. We yeah. got uh, some Game Gear games. What you got? Uh, Chessmaster. So you can be bored out of your mind. <laughs> we got Chakan. What's that one about? It's like a platformer, you're like this goofy skeleton guy. He had this for um, the Genesis. Dude, you know what he looks like? Mm -hmm. He looks like the mascot for Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He really does. He honestly freaking... Let me see if this shows up on camera. <clears throat> Probably not, because my camera's being stupid. Come on, camera. No? Okay. But anyways, look this up, guys. Like, Chaka. Yeah. He honestly looks like... I can't remember his name, but the, the cover of every Iron Maiden album's got that Eddie, I think his name is, or something. Mm -hmm. Has that dude on it. Yeah, I think for Genesis it's called Chakan the Forever Man. Mm. I don't know what the hell that means, but... Means he can't die. Yeah. <laughs> he dies in the game, but... And uh, lastly, I got Battletoads. Because why not, <laughs> right? Is it as infuriating as the NES version? Probably not. Because I know the Genesis one is, it seems a little easier. Yeah. A little forgiving, but I, have, I haven't played the Game Gear one, so I'm not sure. Does it have the time tunnel? I have no idea. Because if it does, I'm going to rage. I should have fired it up, but... So, you know who laughs at that? Aaron Strange. Yeah? He's apparently amazing at the time tunnel. Oh, wow. I suck at it. I've never finished it. <laughs> I would have never thought. He's He's got it down to science, apparently. He's like, dude, it's really easy when you understand the patterns. I'm like, yeah, but there's a lot of patterns. That's the problem. But, you know, maybe we'll... If Aaron ever gets his fucking skinny, questionably heterosexual ass <laughs> down here, um, maybe we can have him do, like, a, a demo on a live stream where he can be, like, you know... Chill. Like, time tunnel 101 with Aaron Strange. Like, this is how you do it. Yeah. That'd be cool. I guess we'll see, because, again, I've never finished it. Yeah, neither did I. It's fucking hard, man. Like, it's it's really hard. And the sad thing is, is that's actually the easier part of the game. Yeah, apparently after that it gets, like, super hard. Mm -hmm. So, There's I'm like... like uh, what do you want, that, that water level? Ooh. No thanks. No. <laughs> With the electricity and Fuck all you, that. Rare. <laughs> Making your stupid hard game, but... Yep, Game Gear, dude. Mm -hmm. Sega on the go. Yeah. Why not? So... 
I've got a pair of SNES games. We have T2, not the arcade game. There's actually two different versions of this. This is the regular game. The arcade game is a different game. So this one is basically the SNES version of the NES game, which is hard, to say the very least. Not like unbeatable hard, but definitely not not easy. Like definitely old school hard. Then we got Super Godzilla, which is actually a pretty good game. It's like a fighting game. Because oh, okay. you're like, you're kaiju and you're just like fucking up other kaiju. So <laughs> it's actually pretty freaking dope um, nice. if you have a chance to check it out. Super Godzilla, love me some kaiju. Nice. That's all I've got to say about Super Nintendo for this video. So um, if you're staying for more, then thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Well, I said I was done with SNES, but I didn't say I was done with cartridges. So we're going to go to the other side. We went over to Coke, now we're going to go over to Pepsi. And check out the other side of the river. First, we've got the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles Instruments of Chaos. Or it's actually called Instruments of Chaos Starring Young Indiana Jones. It's a mouthful. It is. That's a long title. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I remember watching the show when I was a kid. It was a really big deal um, when that came on. Um, there are several of these games. Uh, there's a NES game, which is actually pretty unusual. I don't know. If, I don't think there's a Super Nintendo game, but I think there's a portable one. There might be a Game Boy game. But there was a Super Nintendo now. Of this? Not of that, but I think of Young Indiana Jones. Is there? My thoughts. I know there's a NES one. Yeah, there is a NES one. Huh? I don't remember a Super Nintendo one, but I could be wrong. There's there's the Indiana Jones Adventures of Indiana Jones, which is him as an adult. Oh, okay. That's which is a really <laughs> good game, since it's a LucasArts game. Um, this one, unfortunately, uh, is not. So, yeah, it's. But anyways, Mark has actually played this before. What are your, what are your thoughts on it, Mark? Yeah, like, when I, I used to play the heck out of this, like, back in the day. And I actually beat it, and I was good at it, but I picked that up, I think, two years ago? Yeah. And I tried it, and it's, like, garbage. I don't know what the hell I'm doing in it. The hit detection sucks. And, yeah, I don't know. I have to watch, like, a Let's Player of it and try to get good at it again. I mean, I'm really glad I bought it now. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That, that was a selling point. All right, so we go from a like kind of a questionably good game to what a lot of people consider a fantastic game on the Genesis, uh, Thunder Force 2. Um, in the, was it the four-part Thunder Force trilogy, I think? Or th four-part Thunder Force trilogy, really, Jimbo? Four-part Thunder Force series, excuse me. Um, going all the way up to, I believe, the PlayStation um, is when it ended. Oh, really? Yeah, man, it kept yeah. going for a while, but... Um, I've kind of gone gone down the rabbit hole of Genesis shooters. Um, I haven't. I didn't know that there were so many, but there's a lot. Um, actually, near, probably as much as there were on the Super Nintendo. I didn't know that there were this many that were actually really good. Um, some of them are actually pretty expensive, but 16-bit is, in my opinion, was like the height of shooters. Um, I mean, you had the Turbo Graphics, you had the Super Nintendo, you had the Sega Genesis. Like that was the heyday of the shoot 'em up where shit was really firing on all cylinders. So yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to checking this out. Again, I've never played the game, and this is definitely my cup of tea. This is a, looks like a combination of top-down and side-scrolling. Oh, looks like cute. a little bit of both. Your Rider Jupiter, known as Ace of the Federation, really? They name him after a planet. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know, man, but it's, it's uh, looking forward to checking this out. Uh, although I can't seem to find anything on Thunder Force 1. It doesn't look like that got a console release. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe it was an arcade game, probably, but um, gonna check it out, man. Yeah. On the Genesis uh, back there. Sounds good. Yeah, man, sounds good. So, we got a specialty here, man. I guess, uh, is this technically a homebrew? I guess you I could call it that. Uh, probably like a hack. Well, no, I don't even know what you would call it. I mean, was it made by a company? Yeah, well, it's a uh, bleed. Okay. Well, but... you, you spoiled it now. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's okay, though. But, um,. So tell us about it, Mark. What is what is this? So, I remember this when the Dreamcast came out. Because mm -hmm. when they, they made it, they called it the Bleamcast. Yeah. So when you, you play PlayStation on your Dreamcast. Mm -hmm. So the game in question is uh, Gran Turismo 2 for the Bleam, the Dreamcast. Mm -hmm. Now, they only made three of these. They were supposed to make a fourth one, but then they got sued by Sony. Mm -hmm. It was inevitable. But you basically can play um, your... PlayStation 1 games of said game, Gran Turismo 2, on the Dreamcast. Now, what do you do? You pop this in first, and it like boots up, and then you take it out, and then you pop in the Gran Turismo 2 game, and it'll load up all the data from the PlayStation 1 disc. So it's just a boot disc, basically? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so this is, doesn't have the game on it. Um, the thing, so, the thing that sucks with this one is it's in a, in one of these weird, uh, cases. Mm -hmm. Like the other two, they have, uh, Metal Gear Solid, which is the only one I need, and they have Tekken 3. Mm -hmm. The Tekken 3 and the Metal Gear Solid, they actually come in a case, and it's a two-disc case, to where they have this in the first tray, mm -hmm. and then the other one you can put the game in, which was nice. But unfortunately, he gave this it's just a sleeve. goofy sleeve. So I don't know when I. I mean, I have this game, but I would like to buy you need a case for copy. It. Someone or, makes one somewhere, dude. So yeah, so you have to have this, and then you have the case for the other game, which is kind of annoying. But what can you do? So I look forward to checking it out. It has just better visuals, um, saves, which I think is normal. It has vibration support. It's uh, upscales it with VGA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they, I think they also are supposed to make an actual, just a regular boot disc that plays all PlayStation 2 games, but that was never released. Mm -hmm. They squashed that before that could happen. So yeah, Lean for Dreamcast, Gran Turismo 2. Nice. So, since we're in the neighborhood of PlayStation, sort of, um, We'll talk about a local find that I got here, a PlayStation Longbox Warhawk. Um, unfortunately, the teeth that hold the CD in are actually broke, so as it stands right now, the only way I know of to fix that is one of those foam blocks that you put in there that basically kind of hold the, the disc in place um, until somebody decides to manufacture like a spacer or something like that that you can put in one of these when the teeth break. It's so fucking annoying when that happens because the plastic is so brittle and it just, it just nukes the entire case. and. You know, the problem is, unlike the Sega CD and like the the uh, Sega Saturn cases where you can take the labels out and stuff, this stuff's glued on there. So, I mean, there's no replacing this case unless you get a Warhawk case. Yeah. And I haven't seen anyone make another one. Like, there are no generic versions of PS1 Longbox cases, long cases, not like these. Like, there are exceptions, like the later ones, like uh, Raiden Project, for example, is more like a Sega CD case where you can take the stuff out, but these original ones, no, yeah, like the ones with the ribs. Like when the case goes, that's it. So, but um, it was just really cool to find this in person. Fifteen bucks for a PlayStation One long box, which I love me some long boxes. Obviously, these are neat. It doesn't look like a very good game. Like it's like it's the beginning of. Dude, you never noticed that like almost every PlayStation One game that came out for like the first year was like this exact kind of game. Like you're flying around or you're driving around, you're either racing or blowing stuff up. That's it. Like that was that was the entire library, you know, where they were just kind of just getting into 3D, like massive 3D war zones, and we were like, oh my god! And now we're like, so what? So yeah. that that was pretty much the status quo back then. So another PlayStation One long box for the collection. I don't know how it's going to fit on the shelf yet, but yeah. that's a story for another time. And um, one thing I wanted to point out with the um, top, yeah, you can glue that with a glue stick. You can, yes. Just put it down and it should be good to go. A lot of mine probably need that, so I'll get to that at some point. But until then, we got to talk about some games. So, more games coming your way. So next up, we got Doom Eternal for the PS4. Great game. I got, this was a unusual sale because I went to GameStop just to buy a PlayStation 4 controller so mm -hmm. my daughter and I could play video games together. And I saw Doom Eternal was brand new for like 16 bucks. And they're like, oh, talk to the guy. I'll get it for you. And, All right, so I went to the cashier. I was like, yeah, I would like a new copy of Doom Eternal. So I rang it up. It was like 20 bucks. I'm like, oh, the sign back there said it was like 16 bucks. Mm -hmm. So I showed him. I was like, yeah, see, it says 16 bucks. And I got it for 16 bucks, brand new. So can't beat that. It's a great game. So I haven't played this. Um, I heard mixed reviews of it, but you say it was it's great. Awesome. I heard some people say like it gets boring at parts. If I you're bored by this game, you're on cocaine. <laughs> so. This is one of the most intense games I have ever played. It is non-stop action, where it's like white knuckle terror. <laughs> because when you get into these little battles with the fucking the armies of hell, mm. it is like you if you hold still, you're dead. Oh wow! It is, is that literally crazy? that simple. You oh, gotta man. move and move your ass, and you gotta keep <laughs> killing people every fucking second that you're in this game. 
Now, does it have the rocking soundtrack, like the metal -ish Absolutely, soundtrack? man. It's all fucking... Nice. I, I can't remember the guy's name who does it. Um, It's one, Mick, Mick something. Where it's all like genty fucking guitar. Like... <laughs> like, I mean, it's like... That makes the game. Like, oh, that yeah, is the yeah. perfect soundtrack for Doom. But if you like Doom 2016 and you don't like this, I don't understand. This, this to me, is how you handle a sequel correctly. In my opinion. Like the Pandora Gates and shit. Oh, it's awesome. Definitely look forward to checking that out. Yeah, man. So, we've got a trio of Wii games. Yes. It's still a thing. Um, there's a lot of great games on the Wii. Um, only one of these is potentially one of them. The other ones are not so much. It's more just spectacle. Like, you know, I mean, we're two of the hosts of Dirt Flex, so we like things that are bad. Yeah. We kind of take pride in things that are so bad that it goes all the way around the wheel to being kind of awesome again. So, um, we'll talk about the one that's not so bad first. Um, this was a yard sale find for me. Four bucks. Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World. Um, I'm not a big JRPG guy, but I have heard really good things about this series. Um, apparently it's really good. These are highly sought after games and for four dollars. Yeah, it can beat that. That's a pretty sweet deal. Um, so I will definitely check it out. Um, it just looks like your standard like OG Final Fantasy kind of thing, you know, yeah. turn-based kind of stuff is what it looks like, which is fine. That's cool. Yeah. Again, not my thing, and if I really don't like it, it's trade bait. Um, then we'll get to another one, which was another local find at a store uh, called Second and Charles near me. Four, I don't know if you can see that. It's $4.50. Impossible Mission. Okay, so I'll read to you what it says on the back. A faithful adaptation of the past Epic's classic that improves on the original in every way includes three versions. The C64 original classic, a reskinned classic, and a totally updated new version. That's kind of cool, I guess. Mm. So you don't just get the original and the remastered one like you get where they completely rebuilt the game. Mm. Um, it still doesn't look like a good game. <laughs> like, it definitely looks like a very dated Commodore 64 game. But, I mean, I like obscure Wii things like that. So, I mean, with the Wii, there's tons of weird shit like that on the Wii. The Wii oh, should yeah. be called the Weird, because it's just, <laughs> there's weird stuff oh, yeah. on there, man. Like, all these weird, but sometimes good, like, ports of things. Like, compilations and arcade ports and stuff like that. Like, yeah. you know, the Mad Dumber Creasers. The Wii is a treasure trove of those things. Which, I've said from the beginning on this show, I was like, get those now, because they're going to go up in price. And what has happened? All the anthologies, whoosh, just through yeah. the roof. So, last but certainly not least... Ladies and gentlemen, I understand that this is not a good game. That's kind of the reason I bought it. Just to kind of watch the dumpster fire. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dead Rising, Chop to You Drop. Now, one person might ask a very logical question. Jimbo, why would you put the Dead Rising game on the Wii when they really, Capcom really had to get their best programmers and engineers to get every drop of juice out of the Xbox 360 to be able to run this thing? Just because of the the numbers of zombies on screens, like the you know the, the the scale of the level, like the mall and everything like that, like just everything on this, it's open world, it's so big. I mean, it ran beautifully on the Xbox 360. It was a it really showcased what was possible on that system. Where people looked at, it, they were like, "Holy shit!" You know, where there's like hundreds of zombies on screen simultaneously. That was incredible. You know, the first time we saw this. Um, yeah, this doesn't do that at all. I think there's maybe a limit of like 30, or don't oh, quote wow. me on that, like so zombies on screen, not that many, like way, way less than the Xbox 360. Half of the map isn't there, so, like that you can't go wherever you want, some of it's kind of like cordoned off, so you have to take like the long way around, it's basically their way of saving memory, That's just because <laughs> the Wii can't handle it. Um, playing with the Wii mode does sound interesting, like you know, doing melee and stuff like this just kind of sounded fun. Um, you're still in 72 hour mode and stuff like that, but it's just, it's basically the same game just nerfed way the fuck down, which I think could be interesting. Yeah. You know, it's not in high def or anything like that. It's just. Are there different characters? No. You're still playing as Frank West, but there is one saving grace with this. Apparently, it is way easier to aim with the Wii mode. No. Oh. Like when you have guns and stuff like that, because you've got mm -hmm. Wiimote aiming, which is much more accurate yeah. um, than it is with with this, you know, because you've got a visual cue on screen. So that's apparently one of the pluses of this is that. So, um, but I look forward to checking it out. I mean, if you want to show up for the dumpster fire, you know, just bring <laughs> bring some beer and marshmallows, man, and we can we can do that. 
I'm, Mark's going to be there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, what do we got next, Game Shark? Next, we got Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip. I need to get that for the bone, dude. The PS4. Not bad for eight, like nine bucks. You suck. I wish. <laughs> Where did you get this? At Target. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. So it's like, it's basically like Hunt of the Reckoning in Zombieland mode, mm -hmm. where you've got kind of a, a top down type of shooter. It's four players, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, all the characters from the movie you can play as, and yeah, just run around and just shoot zombies. Yeah, it looks really good, too. Yeah, looks like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I gotta get that one. Fun and funny story. Campaign, campaign, and epic horde moves. Gotta have horde. Nice. Why not, right? Definitely. So much value for, what is it? Nine bucks. Nine bucks. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Great job, Target. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Kevin here from Howdy Weird Games. This holiday season, this Christmas time, what game am I playing the most? Well, the games that I'm playing right now are, believe it or not, some Christian games. Yes, Christian, like the Bible, like Wisdom Tree. We've got Bible Adventures and Journey to the Promised Land Exodus. These games are action platforming games from the Nintendo NES, unlicensed because they're very religious, heavy, and have Christian themes, and they did not belong on the Nintendo NES. In the year 2021, what I'm looking forward to playing the most is a completely different game than those games, and that is Monster Hunter Rise on the Nintendo Switch. I believe it's a time exclusive for Nintendo Switch, so it's coming to that console first, and I'm definitely excited to have it on there. Another Monster Hunter game on a handheld is awesome. This one looks significantly better than most of the Monster Hunter games. And I've been a big fan of that series since the early PSP ones. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas from Howie Bird Games. Bye! So, next ladies and gentlemen, I have a trio. Trace. That's Spanish. For three. Xbox, OG Xbox games. And all three of them are actually pretty good. Okay, so we'll get into this one first. Okay, so we have Doom 3, Resurrection of Evil. Um, in and of itself is basically just DLC, more or less, for Doom 3, where it's like add-on, extra story, and stuff like that. And I've actually never played through that part. But the real reason that I bought it is this is one of the best ways to play Doom and Doom 2. Because it's on here, and you don't have to unlock it. It's ready right from the get-go yeah. in the menus. So, if you really want to play Doom in a really, really sweet way, one of the best ways, in my opinion, you can play this on a CRT, because it's on an Xbone, and Xbone has component output, so it cleans up the picture and stuff like that, and it's a nearly perfect port of the original Doom, mm -hmm. and you've got, you know, twin sticks and stuff to play it. It's, it looks fucking awesome yeah. um, here on the, uh, the, the big Trinitron here in the lounge. Um, there is, I would say, one slightly better way to play it. If you're playing on what we call current gen consoles, like um, I don't know if it's on the PlayStation, it probably is, but on the Xbox One, they released Doom and Doom 2, and it actually patched them recently to upgrade them. They're running nice. at 60 frames a second now. Oh wow! <laughs> so amazing. Doom and Doom 2, the original Doom and Doom 2, all they did was they added some stuff to it to make it run a little bit smoother. It's running at full um, high definition. Wow. Um, scaled up and everything like that, um, and it runs at a clean 60 frames, and dude, it runs like a fucking cheat on cocaine. I mean, it's nice. just like, it's so smooth. <laughs> and I'm not talking like 60 frames peak, I'm talking 60 frames constant. Hmm. On top of that, um, at least, again, I, I can't speak for the PlayStation version, but it's probably the same. Hmm. On the Xbox version, they've got mods you can add. Wow. Community mods. Hmm. Yes. They don't have Brutal Doom yet. I'm hoping they add that one because that's yeah, the one awesome. you want, dude. I want to fucking play Brutal Doom. Yeah. But they have um, Sigil, which was made by John Romero. Mm -hmm. So he it's an add-on to Doom that he made years after he left id. Um, they've got the master levels and everything like that. Like um, All these community add-ons where it completely changes the game. One of them makes it like medieval and shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's, they keep adding stuff to it where you can, mm -hmm. you can play mods on that's Doom fancy. and Doom 2. But um, back to this. Um, this has Ultimate Doom, Doom 2, and the Master Levels for Doom 2. I mean, it's that alone, for what this... It's like $9, and this is one of the best plays, best ways to play the original Doom. That's a bargain. That's so, 
it, this is a really, and again, you don't have to unlock it. It's there from the first second you turn on the disc. I say go ahead and get it. That's my two cents. Next up, we've got Gauntlet Seven Sorrows, a local buy for twelve dollars, I think. Um, this is one of the one of the better Gauntlet games. The, X, the OG Xbox had a ton of these. You know, when these were still big in the arcade and uh, they were porting things over. This is this is one of the better Gauntlet games. Like, and for twelve bucks, that's an absolutely a no brainer. Yeah. Last but certainly not least, ladies and gentlemen, we have Samurai Shodown Five. One of the best in the series, in my humble opinion. Uh, this is one that is definitely on the up and up in price. I think it's around the thirty or forty dollar mark at this point. Yeah. I was able to get it for eighteen. Nice. So just luck, right place, right time. Check it out, OG Xbox for the win. So now it's Mark's turn. <laughs> What's up, Mark? All right, so we got. Disney Classics Aladdin and what? Lion King. What? <laughs> On the same disc? I know. Oh my god! <laughs> That's such a bargain, dude. For nine bucks again. Okay, so one of the games is like kinda hard, and the other game is fucking infuriating. Yeah. Lion King is stupid hard, dude. In my opinion, at least. But anyways, go ahead. Tell us more about it. So, I just, just was going rummaging through uh, uh, Target clearance, and this was nine bucks, and I'm like, I'll pick it up. I mean, I have the originals on uh, Genesis and, uh, well, yeah, I think these are both the Genesis. And Super Nintendo. Yeah, but this yeah. is Genesis version, not the Super. Wow, they didn't get the better version. Yeah, it's interesting. And so that's had better music, dude. Yeah. It had better audio chip. But... It plays in full 1080p, mm -hmm. which is nice. I definitely look forward to checking that out. Probably my daughter and I will check this guy out. Why not? Mm -hmm. Family friendly, nice. bro. See her, see her getting infuriated with it. Oh, she's gonna, <laughs> she's gonna bite the controller, you know, oh, like, God. like father, like daughter, like. Arr, arr, arr. I hope not. <laughs> I hope so. I just bought that controller. <laughs> oh well. So going on that PS4 trend, we have a trio of Xbox One games, ladies and gentlemen. First, we have the Mega Man X Collection, Mega Man X Legacy Collection One and Two. So oh, nice you have from both. eight games on here. Mega Man X through Mega Man X 8 for $16. In high definition, with it's save steel. states. So you don't have to worry about that stupid bullshit where <laughs> you, you can only like get password. No, you can save right in the middle of shit if you want. So you can't do it in the middle of a boss fight. Like they're not gonna they're not gonna cheat that, but you can save right before the boss. Nice. If you want. So yes. Um I only ever played the first Mega Man X. I didn't get into the rest of them. So I'm looking forward to checking that one out. Oops. We're knocking all our shit over here. That's okay. So, next, um, we have one that I have not played yet. Titan Quest. Which is, like, this is a weird kind of port. Um, this is basically a PC game that came out years ago. That apparently was very, very well reviewed. And very, very well liked. It's a top-down, a la Diablo 3 dungeon crawler. Oh, nice. Um, but it's got, uh, let's see, Xbox Live co-op. It's got two to six player co-op, which is pretty sweet. And they basically just ported it over to the Xbox One, you know, polished it and cleaned it up and stuff like that and gave it the real, excuse me, the real treatment to uh, to check stuff out. And it seems neat, man. Like, you're like this mm. Roman dude and, like, you're not just going after, like, Roman mythology. You're going after, like, Asian gods. You're going after Egyptian gods. Like, this is like God of War before God of War was God of War. <laughs> kind of, you know, this this was like a thing. So, looking forward to checking that one out. Last but certainly not least, Man Eater. So, um, if I have to qualify this some way, I'm gonna have to call it Grand Theft Shark because that's basically what it is. It's GTA, but you're the shark, and that's awesome. So, you basically start out as a little baby bull shark, and you were almost killed by this freaking uh, like big game fisherman like he literally cuts you out of your fucking mom and then like you bite his leg off and escape off the boat and you grow into a mature bull shark but you also grow like evolutions and adaptations because of like toxic waste that's being dumped in rivers and shit so you can get like bone skin you can get like sharper teeth your skin can be electrified you can get more resistant to bullets you know and the whole time you know like there's animals after you you gotta face like alligators crocodiles other sharks there's people, but at the same time, you can go up to a beach and just start chomping on some beachgoers. And it's fun, let me tell you. When you jump up on the beach 
right into a bunch of like you know little sexy bikini wearing co-eds and just start chomping on them and everybody's like losing their mind. Like, oh my god! I'd be like, oh, like oh dude, so satisfying. It really is. You got to check this game out, man. This is not an expensive game. I think it was forty bucks when it came out. It's probably less than that right now. It's from Deep Silver, the guys who make um, Dead Island, which I love. Man Eater, check this one out. You will enjoy it. So it's the Game Sharks' turn next. What do we got, Mark? We got Forza Motorsport Seven, in the Xbox One. But it's enabled for Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's patched. Yeah. So you can take take advantage of the new technology. At least it should be. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Oh wait, no. It says Xbox One X enhanced. Yeah. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. It so, should still work on the Series oh, X. Oh, of course. No, all these games will work on the new consoles. It's just not all of them have patches yet to take advantage of the new horsepower. But if this doesn't have a patch yet, which it might, they might have released the patch after publication. They will at some point because this is a Microsoft yeah. property. So it'll look amazing. Don't worry about it. For fifteen dollars, you can't go wrong. <laughs> it's Xbox's Gran Turismo, dude. That's yeah. yeah. You'll like it. I have the first two. I never played them, but. Definitely look forward to starting the series. And if you like GT, you like this. Yeah. It's the same thing. You just like get sexy cars, you hook them up, and you race them. Yeah. It's that simple. It's a racing set. Forza. Yeah. For the win. All right, ladies and gents, we actually have ourselves a stereo pickup here in two different editions. Straight from Limited Run Games. There you go. This way. <laughs> we got Streets of Rage 4. Uh, Mark got the standard edition, but they threw him the, uh, the soundtrack. You know, they weren't supposed to do that. It was only supposed to be for the sweaty fuckers like me, but that's okay. Um, I haven't unboxed mine yet, guys, because I've got the digital copy on Xbox One, but I got the big Genesis box. You can see the hang tab on the top. It's basically a giant Genesis box. Um, they came with the soundtrack, as you see here, and they threw in all kinds of other stuff. You got the cards, of course, posters. And their posters are always neat, dude, because it's like, it looks like the cover of Nintendo Power. Yeah. Special Metroidvania issue. Yeah, Limited Run Club of Fun. I always like the little accoutrements uh, that they throw in here. What's this one? Oh, wow. It's all the upcoming games. Yeah. If I can undo it without ripping it, that'd be nice. Oh, cool. It's all the, a lot of the games that they put out as of recently that I have quite a few of actually. Yeah, I have that one. It was on uh, it's over there somewhere. It was, yeah, but there. Yeah. And it's actually an NES card. Oh, wow. So, and you had you had three choices on that one, don't know. Sidebar, on the uh, Mall Brawl, you had standard NES gray, mm -hmm. you had J yellow, and you had pot green. Hmm. So, just this little poster of all the stuff that they put out. I like half of these. Yeah, I didn't get River City. Yeah, I didn't get that because they. I, when are they going to do that on the Switch? Is what I want to know. I have the. They, they, they have digital on the Switch. Oh, yeah, physical. Yeah, Damascus gear. The takeover coming soon. That looks interesting. Mm. Looks like a beat 'em up. But River City Girls is fun. It's on Game Pass this month, so I'm going to check that out. But yeah. nice. limited run is good stuff, man. This is something for the fans. Except the shipping. Yes, as it takes for fucking ever, you know, yeah. because it's literally like three people in a warehouse, like putting these together and shipping them out. So <laughs> that's why they call it limited run, even though it's not really limited anymore because most of their stuff is open pre orders. Yeah. So, I mean, it is limited, meaning they don't do second prints. Yeah, no prints, second batches. Really. No. So once, once they're gone, they're gone. You know, that's it. But I kind of like the pre order thing because then. You don't have to worry about missing out. Not like, yet. you don't have to literally sit there and hyper click your shit, you know, trying to get yourself a copy. You can still get something that is limited, mm -hmm. but they give you a window where you can order stuff, and if you get your order in on time, then you get a copy. It's that simple. Yeah. That's kind of the way it should be, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to sell more that way, yeah. I think. So, but, and they offer a lot of my best buy now. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, limited run, big fan. Ladies and gents, we just got done talking about limited run games. Now we're going to talk about the other limited run games, known as Strictly Limited, which is basically the same thing as limited runs. They do just special print runs of certain games that you wouldn't normally find. And they put out one that I just couldn't resist because I love me some shoot 'em ups. And this one was just too good of a deal. And it was too, you could buy them individually or you could get the package deal. And it was two collections where I was like, 
I gotta have them both, man. One cheap was a hundred bucks, you know, for the pair of them, but I think they made it worth the while here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Darius Cosmic Collection. Nice. So, on this, you've got all the arcade games. There are seven Darius games on this. On this, one in this hand, yes, the console one, you have nine games. So you have a total of 16 games between these two, which is basically every Darius game ever made, more or less. Um, it doesn't have the, the big, like, my ultimate dream arcade pickup is the giant, what is it, Darius Blast EX or whatever. It's a four-player shoot-em-up oh, wow. with a giant screen. <laughs> Jeez. Where you sit there and you've literally got the gun and shit like that, and like it's a four player side scrolling shoot 'em up, like a giant arcade machine. Wow. I would, and it, it's actually not that old, it came out like 10 years ago. I would love to have that. Like it's gonna take up so much space, but oh my god, I would I would kill to <laughs> fucking own one. There's, I, I, that's pretty much the only one that this collection doesn't include. And I think they've got, they have a new one that's coming out on the Genesis um, from Strictly Limited, so oh, be nice. sure and check that out. Um, so they threw in some extra stuff like they always do. We got a couple postcards yeah, the, postcard. for the Darius Cosmic Collection. And since they were running really behind, they gave me a couple of pins, which are coming out of the bag. Uh, what does that say? Sagaya, I guess that's the company that makes Darius. If you can see that. And the other one just says Darius. So, kind of neat that they throw in those little pins for you. And. We have one more Switch game, not from Struggle Limited. This was a Best Buy pickup for me, but I just had to mention this one because it is such an amazing bargain. I think it is on the PS4 now. I think. Yeah. It was originally on the Switch. It was a time-limited release. Um, they eventually brought it to the PS4. I think it's on the Xbox One arcade thing, I think, too. I think you can get it there, too, for digital only. But, ladies and gentlemen, the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. This is one of the best bargains there is right now. Period. Um, because of all you get, I mean, you basically get the who's who of the SNK arcade games, like pre-Neo Geo. Mm -hmm. Like, this is all the stuff they had, more or less, before Neo Geo was a thing. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, the cool part is, they give you the console version, too. So you don't just have the arcade version. It's like, if you want to play Akari Arcade, you can do that. Or if you want to switch the NES version... You just oh, literally move the slider over and you can play the NES version. And they have that for every game that got a console release. They are all on here. Nice. So you can so compare the two. Yes. So Akari 1, 2, and 3, they've got the arcade games and they've got the console ports. <laughs> for Athena, they've got the arcade game, they've got the console port. Chrysalis, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. And it's just, it's so neat yeah. to get to play those. The upscaling looks great. It looks fantastic in fucking high definition, man. The controls are super sharp. It's just really, really dope. So, uh, solid, solid state saves, so you can save anywhere you want. I think the last one I was working on was Iron Tank okay. for the NES, which is a hard game, dude. That's That game is legit-ass hard. But this is a super sweet collection. Like, this is the kind of thing, the, this is one of the reasons I have the Switch, is to play stuff like this. Because they've got tons of little collections like this that just make it absolutely worth your time to collect for it. So... SNK 40th Anniversary Collection, our jail thumbs up. Are you going to buy it? I think so. I think you should. Because mm -hmm. I might not allow you back on the show if you don't. <laughs> so. I know Nick had it, so I'll probably see if he can put it aside for right. me. What are you waiting for? Go buy it. Come on. Get out of here. <laughs> What's next, Mark? So we got Andrew Dragoon on the Switch. Finally! I know. I ordered this, oh god, when I ordered uh, Streets of Rage 4. And everyone on YouTube was getting their Streets of Rage 4s, and I wasn't getting mine because I bought, me being a dumbass, I bought them together. So they're not going to, you know, Never splurge do on that shipping. Limited... And so Never I had to wait for that. this game to come out to, yeah. to get Streets of Rage 4. So I got this and the goofy card. You would think they would give you something separate, like something additional, but no, they didn't. No. It's they not gave the way me the they soundtrack for Streets of Rage 4. That's about it. But yeah, th this game was like going through hell and back with uh, bugs. So that's why they didn't release it because I guess it wasn't a, it was a, it wasn't a full version of the game once this came out. Is it the original game? It's like remade. Oh, they remastered it. Yeah, they okay. polished up the graphics and everything. And now this is actually fully playable. 
which I think they still added another patch afterwards, but if this, like, say if the internet took a shit, you can still play this. Okay. Which is cool. That's good. So, there's that. Awesome. So, next up, ladies and gentlemen, we got two very epic gifts from this lovely little bastard right here. Um, who came bearing gifts, and I just had to show them on screen. So he asked me, he's like, like, hey, Jimbo, do you have a Super Monaco GP? And I was like, actually, no, I don't. I used to own the arcade game, uh, but I sold it to, hi, John, my uh, buddy John, who's a fellow arcade collector, um, who I just didn't have any attachment to the game. Yeah. And I just wanted the monitor, really, so I just let him have the game. It's a neat game. It really is. It's a cool Sega Racer. Because it's like the last 16-bit Sega Racer, because after that it was Virtual Racing. Yeah. So... Anyways, Super Monaco GP for the Sega Genesis. That's pretty dope. Yeah. I'm looking forward to checking that out. I mean, I can always use more Sega stuff, so yeah. thanks for that, buddy. Yeah. But let's get to the good stuff. So, I pitched an idea to this guy right here who likes to tinker with stuff, and I showed him a mod for something, and he was just like, oh my god, that's a really good idea. Like, I gotta try that. And I was like, well, will you build me one? And he was like, sure. So, I had the NES Max controller when I was a kid. And even back then, I noticed like the one problem with it was that little disc Spider. thing. It just didn't work very well. Like that didn't lend itself well to a D-pad. So I found a uh, a mod online, like a tutorial of how to do this, where you could basically like fix the the whole concept of this thing. Like what Nintendo should have done from the beginning yeah. is more or less make it a pseudo analog stick. And you could actually mod it with, uh, what was it, an X is it an Xbox 360 stick? Yeah, Xbox 360. Okay, and it actually looks almost like it came this way from the factory. I mean, look at that. You basically got a modern style thumbstick in the realm of a D-pad. Yeah. Which is just, this is just like amazing. It's like it's nice and tight and everything like that. Like, I can't, I can't wait to play this thing. And you've got freaking turbo. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like having turbo on the NES without having to break out the advantage. Which, let's be honest, is not good for every game. Like, sometimes you just want the D-pad, dude. You know, but thank you so much for this, Mark, man. It's this like is super cool. like my controller, too. Is it? Mm hmm Have you tested yours out? Yeah, mine works. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Nice. I mean, it's like a little looser, but it does the job. Sometimes you just need turbo, dude. There's some shooters on there where you're just like, like Jaws. Yeah. It's so yeah. much better when you've got turbo, dude. You just light that fucking shark up. So, yeah. Like Mega Man. Yeah, Mega Man, yeah. Having turbo definitely matters when it comes to that. So, I'll give you one more look at it. This is some freaking top shelf work here, dude. I mean, this is amazing how close to stock this looks. So, if you're curious about that, if you'd like to know more about the mod, go ahead and check out Mark's channel, MT Shark 7 Mark the Game Shark. You should you should really just change it to that. No, Mark the Game Shark. Yes. <laughs> just just change it before somebody else does. Yeah. Just change it to that. So, Check that out. He, I'm sure he will be happy to answer whatever questions anybody has. Yeah. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. And they plan to do a, a how-to video on that as well. You should. I think that's a great idea, dude. Yeah. Cool. So, last game pickup from Mark. What you got? We got the next gen. Well, now this gen. Uh, we got the Falconer for Xbox Series X. For Series X. Optimized for Series X. So, I don't have a Xbox Series X because. Me neither. Thank you, scalpers. Yeah. But. You assholes. I already have the money put aside for one, so I definitely plan to pick one up. That's a good choice, bro. Once they get uh, more in stock in, in stores, mm -hmm. I just figured, like, in the meantime, why don't I pick up some games? So, this was, like, on Super Sale. On, uh, I pre ordered this on Amazon for, like, 35 bucks. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I didn't even hear about it. I just. I literally put in Xbox uh, Series X games, and this popped up. I'm like, well, oh, pre-order the Falconer. I'm like, all right. I looked at the screenshots. It looks amazing. I don't know if this is going to show up, but you're basically a Falcon, and you like open world type of game. So it looks amazing. Like, looks pretty dope, man. Yeah. So definitely look forward to checking that out. Probably like. I don't know, March, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever the hell they decide to put these things in stock. Yeah. But I like how lazy like Microsoft is. They just, they just attach a sticker. It's, it was not? probably after the game was printed. <laughs> yeah. Like, the best they could do was a sticker. Yeah. That's cool. Good, man. Good pickup. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to wrap up this particular episode of Retro Game Wall. But before we go, we have one final pickup for you. Ladies and gentlemen. We have the Game & Watch remastered, remade, updated for 2020, which is 
super duper cool. I'll turn mine on so you can see it. I mean, look at that. Nice. You got a little Nintendo clock. And you've got Super Mario Brothers, the original, and the real Super Mario Brothers 2, which we would know as uh, Super awesome. Mario Bros. The Lost Levels over here. And it's beautiful. I mean, like this LCD screen, yeah, screen or LED, is it's just sharp. incredibly freaking sharp, man. Yeah. You can customize all kinds of stuff um, with this clock here. Hang you on. can change like the backgrounds and mm -hmm. stuff too, right? Let's see if I can show this on camera. You got different backgrounds and things like that that you can change. And if you wait, like different stuff will happen actually when Mario is like running by. When the time changes and stuff like that, they, they always, it's Nintendo, they're throwing in little Easter eggs and things because that's what Nintendo does. So, um, I got mine at GameStop. It looks like you did too. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't opened yours yet? No, not yet. You gotta open and play it. Alright. <laughs> so, if you can already tell, I actually have two. Um, I got, I had to go to two different GameStops to get them because they only limit it to one per customer, which is fine because, you know, we don't want anyone scalping and hoarding things. But for the for the price that they charge these, what was it, 50 bucks? Yeah. To get one of these? It's like, it's such a deal because you've got, it's, it's adorable because it's so small. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's got amazing battery life. Um, although, bear in mind that if you have a, a save on this, um, you you can't let the battery run to zero because oh, it'll really? wipe out the save, yes. Oh, like, the battery can get low, but you can't wipe it out because oh, it'll wipe out the save. It'll purge the memory. So you definitely want to keep an eye on that if you have an active save. But um, I think these are really cool. You know, a lot of people call them you know, just like, oh, it's Nintendo just like fucking gouging your money, guys. It's an update to the Game & Watch. It pays tribute to the original. You get two yeah. original Super Mario Brother games on it. I mean, they even threw the clock in, thus the name Game & Watch, even though, excuse me, no one's going to use this as a clock in the year 2020. Actually, I am. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, yeah, but I was going to plan on putting it in my where I, my little desk area that I when I work from home. I was going to just put it like right in front of my monitor. Are you going to leave it on the charger? Probably. I mean, you'd have to. It's, yeah. it's on a battery. It's going to run out. Mm. Okay, well, everyone <laughs> who's not Mark is not going to use this for a, a clock, but apparently Mark is. Mm. But it's just really cool that, you know, for like 50 bucks, they're doing this little nod to their fans, yeah. you know, where you can get something cool like this in the year 2020. And let's be honest, 2020 hasn't been the best year, so little little nuggets of happiness like this from the big end, I think, are much welcomed. Yeah, and like it includes that. ball, which is cool. Yeah, it includes the original ball game, which no one's going to play, yeah. except Mark. So <laughs> I play for like five minutes. I know, <laughs> but I, I just dude, just getting to play Super Mario Brothers and the Lost Levels, which is by far the hardest. Yeah, see, Mario just tapped a couple of coins. Because it's two o'clock. Um, the Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels or the real Super Mario Bros., is by far the hardest Mario game ever made. I've beaten it. Have you? Yeah. It is hard. I mean, like, it's like, I mean, it's not, like, hard compared to, like, Demon Souls or anything like that, but for Mario standards, yeah, you gotta bring your A game, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, because you're going on a level where they shouldn't exist, next thing there's, like, flying fish coming out of nowhere, you're like, what the fuck are they doing here? It's just like, it's Mario in hell, basically. So, check it out, ladies and gentlemen, the Game Watch, they said, you know, that these were gonna be hard to get. I didn't have any problem finding one. Neither did I. I mean, Amazon had them. Oh, look, he's sleeping now. I've never seen that. Because I didn't touch it, apparently. So the clock turns off. So it's not a very good clock, Mark. Because <laughs> it's a crack. clock that goes to sleep. <laughs> you guys have to like wake it up. That's interesting. I wonder if you can turn off the... It literally the... turned itself off. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you got to turn it back on. I wonder if there's a setting to keep it on all the time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's one settings button. Oh, jeez. Well... Like so much for that! <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called a watch, not a clock. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Nintendo Game & Watch, man. Um, GameStop, uh, maybe Amazon might have them. Don't pay scalpers prices, guys. Yeah. These, no. The, anyone who tells you these are sold out, they're full of shit. You can go buy one of these right now. Even at Target. Yeah. So, go and check them out. If you want one, Super Nintendo Collectibles. Mm -hmm. Do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this awesome... Game Shark approved edition of Retro Game Hall. Special thanks to my excellent guest and buddy and co host of Dirt Flicks, the one and only Mark the Game Shark. Thanks, dude. Yeah, thanks for having me. Sure, it's always. It's, 
that's always nice, you know, to come and hang out. Oh, oh, and for anyone, I should have covered this earlier in the video because people are probably freaking out, like, what happened to System Psycho? <laughs> Guys, he's not dead, okay? He's not fired. He's still on the show. Mark was down here for a special episode, and I actually asked Miguel in advance. I was like, hey, man, like, Mark's going to be down here. Is it okay if we do a Retro Game All episode? He's been on the show a couple of times. He, of course, said, he was like, dude, why are you even asking me? It's no problem. <laughs> He's like, it's your show. It's fine. Yeah. He's like, you know, I appreciate you letting me know, but it's like, don't worry about it. Go ahead. He's like, we'll do another one in January, which we will. Miguel will be back on the next episode of Retro Game Hall. He's got awesome pickups. I have a bunch that, unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, didn't get here in time, but that's okay. We will save them for the next episode. You can check out this magnificent bastard over here on Empty Shark 7 on YouTube. Look, Google Mark the Game, or YouTube Mark the Game Shark, and that should come up. I'm going to have to be on your channel at some point. Yeah. Yeah. It's always like people coming to me. Yeah. I haven't been invited, so. You can meet Bradley. Yeah. I can meet Bradley and like punch him in the face. So, <laughs> yes. So for those of you who don't know, Bradley is Mark's killer dog. Yeah. Who hates everything. Basically, if Satan were a dog, he'd be Bradley. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> so matter of fact. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. And we will see you next time. Yeah.